Welcome everyone to the second session for ML Strategy uh, Today we will be discussing a little bit of math. I know you guys did not want a lot of math, so I will try to keep it a little interactive and fun. And after that, we will have a small demo for linear regression, which you saw last time. So, before starting, I request all of you to uh, put your phones on silent so that uh, the recording is more disturbed. Okay. So, uh, the topic we are going to discuss today is, is projections. So, as everything in linear algebra, we come back to this equation Ax equal to b. And yeah, uh, before this, um, I expect that all of you know a little bit about linear algebra, that is vectors, plot products and what they represent. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, what, uh, we talk about projections. So, we come back to this equation Ax equal to b, where A is a matrix m, uh, of n cross n, x is a column vector and similarly b is also a column vector. Um, and we know that this always represents a system of linear equations uh, and we try to find a solution for x such that this uh, equation is satisfied. But we know that this is not always uh, solvable and we will see the case where a is a tall matrix, tall as in the number of rows is greater than the number of columns, so it looks tall. So we will look at that case and we will see in what cases that uh, this equation might not be solved. So yeah, before that uh, I want to give you guys an intuition of what column space is. So for that uh, we will look at the matrix vector multiplication. And uh, uh, see, a uh, matrix can be represented as a set of column vectors, right? So this uh, say is a column vector of uh, n dimensions. Similarly, uh, a1 to a n, all of the vectors uh, are of are column vectors of n dimensions. Is that clear? How uh, a matrix A can be represented as n uh, column vectors? Is that fine? Yeah. So when we write a into x, where x is a vector. See, a1 to an are vectors and x is again a column vector. We can represent that as this. We can say that if we scale a1 by x1, a2 by x2 and so on up to n, we will get the final vector which is ax. Is that clear? How uh, each individual values of the column vector x scales each column vector of a to get the final column vector ax. Yeah, is that fine? So, if you look at it closely, you can see again we get some form of a linear system over here, linear uh, system of linear equations over here, where if, uh, we are trying to get linear combinations of these vectors, a1 to an, and uh, we get some kind of a vector as an output over here. And now, if there is some kind of a vector b, which uh, is not, which cannot be represented, as a linear combination of all these vectors a1 to an, that b cannot be represented uh, by in this form, right? Is that clear? Yeah, uh, you, uh, I'll give you a more visual uh, interpretation of this very soon. So try to understand it now. Uh, if uh, the output of this is a vector b, and if a1 to uh, an cannot form a linear uh, system of linear equations which cannot make b then a x equal to b will not have a solution. Yeah. So, a1 to an are the column vectors which uh, form the column space of a. Now, what is the column space? Column space is basically the subspace which is spanned by all of these column vectors. Um, that is basically, uh, basically the column space. So, we can also say that if B does not lie in the column space of A, then AX equal to B has no solution. Is that fine? Now, we will take an example which will hopefully make things better. Yeah. So, over here we can see that A1 over here and A2 over here are the two column vectors of A. Say, uh, say A is like this. These are the two column vectors of A. 6, 0, 0 and 0, 6, 0. 
So they can be represented as this. Six zero zero is one of the column vectors, and zero six zero is another column vector of A. Is that fine? So the space spanned by these two vectors is obviously this uh, z equal to zero plane, the x y plane. Yeah, fine. That's the column space of um, that's the column space of A. Now if we look at Yeah, if you look at B, B is 3 power 3 power 3, which obviously does not lie on this z equal to 0 plane. So we can say that the space spanned by A1 and A2 does not contain B, and hence AX equal to B will not have a solution. Is that clear? Does this uh, thing, the uh, visual representation, make it more clear? How A1 and A2 are the two column vectors of the matrix A. And B is 3 comma 3 comma 3. And the column space of A is z equal to 0, the xy plane. And if B does not lie on this column space of A, then A x equal to B will not have a solution. So that is uh, why A x equal to B for when A, A is a tall matrix will not have uh, solutions. Now, if we see again, um, as you know, we are engineers, so we need to live with the best approximation possible. So we will try to get a point which is closest to B on our column space. Do you agree that will be the uh, best approximation of B? See, we cannot get the solution for Ax equal to B, but maybe we can get Ax such that B, uh, uh, the, such that Ax is the closest point to B on our space. So over here you can see that P is the closest point to B which lies on our uh, column space of A. Yeah? Is that clear? And uh, you might also agree. Okay, fine. Um, now I'll ask you, you as a question. Why do you think P is the closest point to B and not any other point? Yeah. So the answer is that because uh, you can see B minus P. So if we remove this component from B, you get this perpendicular. So what uh, what I basically want to say is that this point and uh, this point is perpendicular to B. Sorry, this point is perpendicular to uh, the column space of A, and the perpendicular distance of this point is the lowest. That's why this is the best approximation for B on our column space. Is that clear, or do you want me to explain that? Yeah. Now, let us assume that we can write P, the P vector as AX0, where X0 is some kind of a solution. Fine? Now, our target is to reach this X0. If we find this X0, we will get our closest approximation uh, for this projection. Yeah. And uh, now we agree. So, uh, like always, P, B is a vector. So, B will have some kind of a component on P and some component uh, over Z. Is that clear? Yeah. So if we remove this component, the P component, we will get this perpendicular vector. Vector perpendicular to this column space. Yeah. So we can say that B minus P is perpendicular to our column space of A. Okay. Where again A1 and A2 are the columns of our matrix. So as A1 and A2 lie on the column space clearly, they are the ones who span the column space. We can write that the dot product of A1 and B minus P equal to 0. Is that clear? That's this is, these both are the dot products. Fine. So A1 transpose into B minus P equal to 0. Similarly, A2 transpose B minus P equal to 0. Is that fine? Because A1 and A2 lie on this column space, and as B minus P is perpendicular to this column space, the dot product between these two should be 0. Again, if we try to uh, put those into a matrix, as uh, again, I would like to say that we do that, uh, we represent things in a matrix uh, form because it is easier to extrapolate it for multiple dimensions or multiple vectors and it is also easier, very easy to code as you guys will see in just a moment. So, we will write this, we will uh, club these together and write it as a matrix and uh, do you understand how we got it? 
this a1 transpose and a2 transpose matrix into b minus t equal to 0. So, we plug these together and we get this. Now, what we do is, we substitute p. We assume that p, the projection vector is some ax0, where x0 is the solution we want to get. Right? So, we, as a in the beginning is a1, a2, as uh, a1 and a2 vectors are the column vectors of a, and a is not equal to b. These were the conditions we agreed to before, and we just substituted this to get this final equation where a transpose b minus a is not equal to b. Just let that sink in and if you guys have any doubt, please ask me. Is that clear? Fine? So now if we solve for x, we get this. x not equal to a transpose a inverse a transpose b or the projection is this. Fine. Uh, and now you see this projection is dependent totally on a the R matrix and the B which you want to project. So if we just club this together, we can call this as a projection matrix. And if you use this projection matrix, it will be unique for one A. And if you just multiply this to any kind of vector, you can get that projection on that call on its column space. Fine. You just need to multiply this projection matrix into some vector and you will get its projection on that column space of A. That's what I have written over here and that's what you can see over here also. Fine? That's that. Now, but uh, we'll see that why, why are we talking about this tall matrix as A x equal to B and stuff. So, now if you remember, we get our data in the form of uh, multiple data points and labels. So, we, we'll have our features and we'll have our label. Features are basically uh, you know, attributes of our uh, data points and the columns and the uh, label is the y, the output of our, uh, you know, what we are trying to predict. So, if we represent our data in the form of matrices, we will get this, our data point matrix, this is our label matrix and if we find such a theta, like, like we did with x0, so that we get a close approximation of y on the column space of x we have our solution. Do you get the motivation for doing this? See, over here, like over here we had some random tall matrix A and we wanted to project B onto A so, so that we can get we can uh, get the closest approximation of B on the column space of A. Yeah. So what we are doing here is we have a, uh, our uh, data matrix and clearly the number of data points would always be like most likely be uh, greater than the number of features we have, right? Our uh, data point will have say uh, 15 features but we have some 10,000 rows in uh, our data uh, matrix. So this will clearly have more rows than the number of columns. So this will be a tall matrix and we are trying to approximate this value. We are trying to predict this value y. So we, we use our data matrix and we try to approximate a theta such that we get a y, a projection of y on the column space of x. Fine. So this is another intuition for linear regression. You can see that this, okay, I will show you. So if you remember theta, this was the closed form solution for linear regression. If you guys recall a bit, I know this is a little scary to look at, but this was a solution to a linear regression and you can see that this is the solution to our problem over here. We skipped the derivation part last time for x0, uh, theta0 and you can, this is one way to derive uh, and come to the solution for theta. There are other ways to do that. Uh, uh, I'll show you, at, that's optional, I'll, I'll show you guys if you want. And uh, again, then we have this gradient descent solution and the loss function, uh, gradient of the loss function over here and so after, like similar to this uh, projection we have linear regression whose closed form solution is this which is basically a projection uh, of y onto uh, the column space of x and this is the gradient descent solution for uh, the linear regression part. So again this looks very complicated and it might at first glance but it's really not. You could uh, Try this if you want, I'll put it up afterwards. First, you guys can try to attempt uh, the demo. 
So you guys could scan or you could just uh, write this on your uh, browsers. This is a, a repo for uh, GitHub. You could uh, clone that into, no, not clone that. You can just download the data files and the demo file and you can start attempting the gradient descent. Uh, let me know if you are done. I'll put up the uh, previous slide. Uh, did you guys understand all of the slides? Do you want me to repeat anything? Uh, just let me know, I'll uh, have to do so. Please remember to uh, copy the name also because the demo file won't work if you don't do so. Yeah, so this is the data file, uh, the CS.csv .cs file, save it and uh, then you can just copy the uh, repository link and then paste it over here. 
you will get this demo dot hyper mv open this and over here you can upload this file and then start running all of these cells right? Yeah, also, uh, uh, just a moment guys, uh, over here in the beginning you can see how I imported all the data files and uh, other, uh, other things like I uh, showed you how to plot the data set, just uh, very basic stuff and after that I have given these uh, mathematical formulae uh, using these hints, please try to fill in this class method, uh, uh, using this you can Using this, you can uh, implement uh, the linear regression. Uh, I think I wrote this one. Uh, you can uh, write all of the markup code in number in these methods, and after that, you can try running your code uh, using these uh, cells. Below.